Hi guys, this is Harold the Smiling Scotsman. I'm going to do something I never do. I'm going to do a review on a 2024 Kenworth T880 that, um, that I've kind of been taking roughly a 30 day test drive in. It hasn't went so well to say the least. When I first got into this truck, the left front steer tire it had a big chunk of rubber that had been gouged out of it and it was all the way down to the cords. That's an automatic out of service before it even left the lot. They brought this truck to me <coughs> in uh, Elko, Nevada, because that's where I was broke down at in my truck. And this truck came out of the Kenworth dealership here in uh, the pack lease side of Kenworth dealership in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, uh, on Saturday morning, I got up. <coughs> they had, we had done the swap out because I had to go get a rental car for uh, the driver that brought me this truck because I couldn't go back to Salt Lake. Anyway, he was only given one key. <laughs> Not two. He was only given one key. So anyway, I got, got up Saturday morning. I opened the truck up, started the motor up. going to let it idle, get it warmed up. It's like 23 degrees outside. I'm going to put my stuff in the truck be about my business. <coughs> so anyway, so I got out of the truck after I'd started it, shut the door, and immediately the door's locked, which they're not supposed to do. So it took three out about three hours and 20 minutes <laughs> to get somebody to come out and get the doors open. And that was, uh, it was supposed to have been 250 bucks, but the guy felt sorry for me. It wasn't a locksmith. It took like three hours and 20 minutes because it wasn't a locksmith at Elko. The nearest locksmith was in Winnemucca about 120 miles away. And I ended up getting the owner of a, of a towing company to come out and he was able to get the door open for me, which I was very grateful for. <clears throat> so anyway, he felt sorry for me. And uh, remember the key was locked in the ignition and the, and the truck was running for three hours and 20 minutes till it was open. Anyway, he was gonna charge 250 bucks. He felt sorry for me, he only charged me 150. During this deal, he found out that the lock in the door was actually broken, which it should have never been broke. And the left front steer tire had a big, a big chunk of rubber that was gouged and it was falling out, you know? Automatic out of service. That's a high dollar fire too. <clears throat> you get caught at it. And uh, so I took my pocket knife just to try to pick at it and see, you know, how deep it was. That's clear down to the cords. So needless to say, it was gonna need a steer tire. Now, this is just this is coming from the company, come from Kenworth and Salt Lake like this. Anyway, um, the lock was broken on the door, and I needed another, on the driver's door, and I needed another, uh, another steer tire. Anyway, when I climbed into the truck and, and leaned back in the truck after I got my stuff in it, you know, I'm getting ready to go, and uh, <coughs> and the door, and, and, and the seat's broke. The seat is broken in half, literally. This is a brand new truck. When I got it, it had 23,604 uh, miles on it, I believe it was. And I'm going to show you that seat. So anyway, so I, I, when I was finally ready to go, I went and I got my stuff and I took off to go to, uh, to Reno. And in the process, these new trucks have all kinds of sensors on it. And they got sensors on the side, sensors on the front. And where you are literally disciplined, if you get too close to the fog line or too close to the zipper, you know, or too close to somebody that's in front of you in the computer's mind, and you get disciplined. Because you got to listen to all these stupid beep beeps and buzz buzz and and bong 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 bong, you know, leaving highway, you know, break and and you know, the leaving highway part. I found out that this computer will tell the truck to it, you'll get the readout. Your screen will, and, and your truck will turn red. It says leave, departing highway, and in big letters it says break, and the brakes will slam down to slow you down. Now the truck doesn't know if you're on solid ice, or if you're on snowpack, or if you're on dry road. All it knows is you got it, it, it's got to slam on the brakes. Try that on the ice, because it did it to me six or seven times on ice and snow. Slick ice, slick ice in Wyoming. If you want to get woke up real quick, you try that shit. In my opinion, this truck is, this, Kenworth is going to end up with a really, really bad lawsuit because of this truck. If, if they don't fix this thing, or maybe it's like that on all the trucks, I don't know, maybe they're all like that. A guy tried to tell me that it, it had to do with, with calibration. Well, I don't know and I don't really care. 
Well, I, I, but I am concerned about my own life, and I'm concerned about the lives of the people that are around me. And with this truck, this truck right here, this is a rolling death trap. And if they don't get it fixed, it's going to kill somebody, and Kenworth's going to get a really, really bad lawsuit. And there's not going to be any way that any fine print in the contract is going to get them out of it. Yeah, you just you let your, your truck slam on the brakes when you're on, you know, you're running 25, 30, 35 mile an hour on ice in Wyoming. You try that. Or, or ice in Utah, which is kind of rare because they work really hard on the roads. Or, you know, try ice in, in Nevada, okay? Just, man, look at it. Anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's got sensors, and, and you get too close to the fog line, it goes, dee, 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 dee. You get too close to the zipper. Dee, 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 dee. Why am I being disciplined like that? I mean, I'm a seasoned guy out here. I know how to run trucks down the road. Why do I have to put up with that shit? Why should I ever have to put up with something like that? I will never drive a truck like this again. I'm only doing it this time for this past month because my truck is having the engine rebuilt in it. And it's still in the shop. It should have been out a long time ago. Anyway, but I'll tell you what, you let that shit slam on the brakes when you're on ice. Well, hey, that, there's a song that comes to, to, to mind. Slip slide in a way. Okay, well, I can't sing it. Right? I use I, I use sarcasm sometimes because I'm so pissed off about something. That's really the only way I can deal with it. It's not a conscience. Cruise control basically turns off when you're about five or six truck lengths behind the truck in front of you. <clears throat> it doesn't completely turn it off, but it stops the it, it stops the flow, the acceleration or the, the, the velocity rather. And you won't and, and, and it does it so gently that you almost don't even know it until you're like doing five or ten miles an hour slower than what you were doing before. And you take your eyes off the road. That's very important. Take your eyes off the road to look at the dashboard. Oh, 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 wow, it's slowing down. Take your eyes off the dashboard so you, so you can read that. This says, leaving highway, break. Take your eyes off the highway. That's what this truck is telling you to do. 2024 T880 Kenworth. Are all the 880s like that? Do they all do that? Think about that. So anyway, yeah, the side sensors, it's got sensors, it had sensors on the side. And, and I, they took them off for me when I came back to Kenworth. Um, this is on the, on the first maiden run. And they took the side sensors off because the side sensors were going off for ghost cars. They're too close to the car. There ain't no car. What the fuck am I too close to? Anyway. Um, gosh, let's see. Oh, and also, and also this truck didn't have any heat in it. Zero. No heat. No, you're a dirty, grubby truck driver. You don't get heat in the middle of the winter time in a rental truck. Never. I'm going somewhere with this. They have the idle set, an idle restrictor that only allow the truck to run for five minutes. And when you gotta sleep in that, sleep in the truck, and you got no heat, and you can't make it idle, you're gonna freeze. You're gonna freeze. In fact, they got it set at thresholds to where if it's, you, you can't have any air conditioner, you know, unless of course you're going down the road, but at night you can't have any air conditioner Unless, let me see, I've, I've got the printout. I don't have the printout with me. I may add that. I may have to correct myself. and Because and, I wanted to add that into this video before, you know, before I get into post-production. Because I want to tell you what the, uh, if I remember correctly, the thresholds on it was you couldn't get an AC unless it was at least 100 degrees outside. That's right, 100 degrees outside. Then you get some air conditioning if you're sitting in the up. And you don't get any heat. Unless it's below like, I don't know, 25, 26 degrees, something like that. No heat. Anyway, so I was coming back from um, my jaunt out in Reno and I was headed home. This was in the maiden voyage and I stopped in and well, I stopped into to Kenworth out in Sparks. And uh, Sparks is a suburb of, of Reno and um, they were going to, uh, I, I wanted them to fix it. And so the, the, the service guy out there, Mikey, says, well, I can't do it unless I get permission from Salt Lake because that's where the truck came out. And I said, okay, that's fine. <clears throat> so he sent emails to them, and, 
and he got an email back from a guy named Jay. J A A. Jay. He's the guy that's the captain of the ship out here at Packley's here in Salt Lake City. And basically, basically, in that email it said, well, he's just a dirty old grubby truck driver. He doesn't deserve heat in the winter time, you know, in the middle of the winter. And, you know, don't you touch that idol. And he's, you know, in, in, in the email, and this is, this is the way that I read it. This is the way I read it. Because I read the email twice on the, on the guy's computer. Because he wanted to prove to me that what was going on. Anyway, he said that he was told that he could adjust the thresholds. And his tech, his tech tried to adjust the thresholds and couldn't adjust, adjust the thresholds because it had a computer code to lock on. On the high end, on the low side, there was nothing he could do. And, you know, Michael's trying to get this guy, Jay, the guy that is the captain of this Packley ship out here. He wouldn't do it. So you think that didn't make me matter? Oh, God. So anyway... So um, I was coming back this way. Uh, you know, I had my, my return load going back towards Omaha. I stopped in here, and, <clears throat> and that was when I actually got to meet the asshole that sent Mike and uh, Sparks that email that I'm not apparently good enough to have heat because I'm a truck driver in the middle of wintertime when I'm trying to sleep. So anyway, because it had heat. You know, going down the road, you got heat. But at night, you got to sleep. Forget it. It ain't going to happen. You can't set the cruise. Anyway, that problem got rectified. And the, the asshole Jay, he uh, apparently didn't know how they fixed it. I don't, I don't know where they asked or not. I don't really care. The techs down here, see, they look out for you. I told Mike out there and, and Sparks, I said, you know, if this was my shop, I would have fixed it for you. If our roles were reversed, I'd have fixed it for you. And he told me that he, if he did, if he fixed it, then he's going to get fired. I said, you know what? I don't give a shit if I get fired or not. I'm going to take care of the driver, okay? Because I got hurt. All right. I'm, I'm a good guy. I'm a stand-up guy. Anyway, so they got the heat fixed. They got that aisle fixed, and then I had some heat, which I was very grateful for. But, um, so that, and, and he, he took off the side sensors here in Salt Lake. So anyway, so I go on, right, going home, do my deal, turn around, come back for another trip, because I run Reno often. And uh, so I got, I got pulled into the, the scales on the uh, east side of Salt Lake City. And I got cited for no triangles. And I thought, no triangles? I've never had, not ever not had triangles in a truck before. Remember, it was, it's a rental. One of my drivers brought to me. Well, they never put any triangles in it. They put some uh, fire things in it. No triangles. So I'm pissed off and on the phone <laughs> with these people here in Salt Lake again. And I was talking to a young guy. His name's Rob. He's a great guy. He really, he's a really cool guy. I, I, it was very, very nice, and, and asshole Jay wasn't here. So anyway, he said, no problem, sir, I can take care of that. So he got me some triangles, and now I'm all good. I still got cited for it, but I'm good, okay? So anyway, so so I'm doing my deal now, and I got a phone call yesterday from my employer. He says, you know what? We got all these trouble with this truck. I want you to take the truck back. We got a rental car that staged, you know, that one that you went to get our other driver, blah, blah, blah. So I'm bringing this truck back, and they're going to get, keep it. I'm not running any more miles. I run, I put probably 10,000 miles on this truck, and they have not been enjoyable miles. Now, overall, I do want to say this. Overall, the truck does run pretty smooth, you know, going down the road, and, uh, and it is governed at 75, 75, 76, and that's always nice, but... Um, but on the give and take side of it, on the off side, with all the, the, the buzzers and, and the, the alerts, that and, and none of them should be on there. It's the stupidest thing that Kenworth ever did. They really, because what they've done is they have, they have like I said earlier, they Kenworth is going to get into a huge lawsuit. We're going to have a multiple fatality accident because this damn thing keeps locking up. And they, it, may buy, it may be like that on all the rest of the 2024 T, T880s. I'm going to show you the truck in a minute. But I don't recommend anybody drive a T880 from Kenworth in any way, shape, or form, you know, unless there's none of these sensors on it. Because when a truck, in its mind, is going to override the intelligence of the driver that's operating the truck and slam down the brakes 
on ice, on snow, then there's a problem. Kenworth is begging for a problem. They're begging for a multi-million dollar lawsuit. And if they send this truck out again, or if they have other trucks, you know, it's like, didn't, didn't Jeep Cherokee just do a 330,000 unit recall in the last couple of days? I think I've seen about that on TV. You know, the Jeep Corporation with the Grand Cherokee, because they got big problems. And remember the Prius? Remember when they came out with those Priuses? And they had hundreds of thousands of those vehicles? that for no reason at all, they would accelerate in traffic and cause huge accidents. And, you know, they once they, I, that thing got hush-hush because they, I guess they figured out what was wrong with it. I don't know. I, I guess they're not having those problems anymore. But, you know, these, but these companies, they're, they're begging for huge lawsuits. And with the Prius, they were trying to poo-poo all that off. They played hell doing it because of the amount of accidents. I don't know, thousands, tens of thousands. I don't know how many. But it was you heard you heard about it all the time. Anyway, Kenworth is begging for a big lawsuit on this truck, and I hate to see anybody get hurt or killed in the meantime. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you this truck now. But before I show you the truck, I want you to know that I think, and I'm 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 going to speak directly to Kenworth, and I know that this this video is speaking directly to Kenworth. Um, I don't know who the regional manager is. For this location out here in Salt Lake City, the Pack Lease office at Kenworth on Constitution Boulevard or Avenue or whatever the hell it's Constitution something. I'm going to tell you that if this guy Jay is really going to be your lead man out here, this is going to be his ship and he's the captain, you need to terminate it. You need to terminate that man because it's that man's responsibility that this truck went out. It was, this truck was an automatic out of service before it left this property and it was okayed through his office. His office dropped the ball on this and it came to me into my hands from our driver that brought it to me in Elko and like I said this this, this truck man Jay dropped the ball on this bad. At first I was willing to be nice to him and say you know and tell Kenworth and, and talk to you guys at Kenworth and say hey look you know, if you can educate this guy so this stupid asinine mistake doesn't ever happen again, then awesome, go for it. But now I'm at the point I'm like, you know what? I've seen so many guys fired in this industry over stupid reasons that they, they, they none of their fault. I, I, man, I can get into, I can do videos about that. I'm gonna tell you, I am right now here and now. I am calling, I am telling you, Kenworth, you've got to get rid of this guy named Jay. You got to send this guy down the road. I, 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 I don't know that this can be fixed here. I don't know that, that you can educate this guy to, to, to where this is not going to happen again, okay? So I'm, I'm calling on Kenworth to terminate the employment of this asshole named Jay that works at Pack Lease Center here at, at, at the Kenworth dealership on this Constitution Street, whatever it is. It's right off of Highway 201, okay? I want you to terminate him and send him down the road. I would really like to have an email and, and have somebody tell me that this is taken care of, okay? I'd also really like to have an email from the, from the service department about what they discovered was wrong on this truck. Now, I'm never going to get that, okay? Anyway, that's about all I got to say, although I'm going to show you the seat. I'm going to show you the truck. I'm going to flip this thing around. I'm going to get up in the truck somehow. Here we go. Ah, my goodness. All right. This is the offending seat. Well, I can just hold this right. Get it out far enough. Look, now if you look at this side over here, this side's good and solid, or pretty solid. This side over here is kind of like better. Look at that. See how that seat moves back and forth? Okay, it's not supposed to do that. It is broke down there. See how it's moving around? I think you can see it. Okay, it's not, it, it's supposed to move a little bit, but it ain't supposed to move like that. It's broken in the seat. And that's how it's been for me the whole time I've been in this truck. And you sit kind of cattywampus in it, and all that stress goes to your knees. And I've gotten out of this truck before with my left knee hurting so bad, I couldn't hardly walk and I couldn't hardly get in and out of the truck because the seat ain't right. So they're going to have to put a new seat in here. And they are aware of that. So let me get out of the truck here so I can finish this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the screen. I want you to see this truck. Get back over here. This is what we got 
for the brand new 2024 T880. Look at how little bitty that bunk is. You know, I believe that's a, I think that's a 28 inch bunk in there. That's barely, barely big enough for you to lay down on. You almost got, almost got to sleep on your side or you'll fall out. It's, it's not a bad looking truck, you know, but just because the truck looks good does not mean that it's safe. You've got a cute little window back there so the horse can look at you at night. <laughs> no, I don't find that funny at all. Anyway, I want you to see those numbers right there. And uh, I'm just going to show you real quick a little bit on the inside. And then I got to go. See how tiny that bunk is? You have itty bitty cabinet there. You got one sort of cabinet, one little sort of rack, one sort of cabinet, and that's it. Now there's no S-Bar heater in here. There's no APU on this truck. None of that. None of it. I mean none. You got your little stuff back there. There is no heat in this truck. Now the stereo is pretty good. I'll give them that. Pretty good stereo. And you get a radio that doesn't work right. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, that is, that is going to conclude my review of the 2024 Kenworth T880. There you go. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. God bless. If you ever rent anything from any fucking Kenworth, I'll tell you what, if you ever rent anything from Kenworth, you better make doggone good and sure it's all there but they ain't screwed you out of triangles or a fire extinguisher or whatever and make sure that you know make sure that you're you're going to be safe in this thing make sure that those sensors are not on there remember you got to take your road your eyes off the road to put it short the whole time that you're driving this truck down the road it is a constant struggle it is a constant battle between you and the truck your safety is at risk. Please, please, please don't drive trucks that have these sensors. It is a, it, it, it's, it's a day, it's, it's an 11 hour day of a battle between you and these trucks. And I can't say again that they're on all of them, you know, but this has been my experience on a 2024 Kenworth T880 and I'm going to go. Please be safe out there, guys. In my opinion, Kenworth does not, I repeat, does not give a damn about whether you're safe or not in your equipment. Thank you. Goodbye.